shots of children with and without disabilities playing and learning together. Resource package on collecting and analyzing data on persons with disabilities. Translating knowledge into action. How to analyze and interpret data on persons with disabilities. Mitch Loeb, Washington Group on Disability Statistics. Okay, I'd like to talk about data analysis and the importance of disaggregation by disability status. And this is important when we think of monitoring the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Sustainable Development Goals, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. The objectives of the UN CRPD, that Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and the Sustainable Development Goals, and the implications for data, what do they include? The goal of the Convention is full participation of persons with disabilities. And there is a role for data in that, that the information shall be disaggregated as appropriate and used to help assess the implementation of states parties obligations to identify and address the barriers faced by persons with disabilities in exercising their rights. So baked in to the verbiage in the convention are specifications for data collection, and that's important. The SDGs similarly have a goal of leaving no one behind. Leaving no one behind simply means including everybody. And including everybody means that we have to be able to identify persons with disabilities among others and ensure their or monitor their inclusion over time. So we have to be able to disaggregate SDG indicators. And how do we know if those UNCRPD and SDG objectives have been met. And this bar chart simply shows you the difference in employment levels between people with and without disabilities. And you can see clearly that those with disabilities are less likely to be employed than people without disabilities. If those bars are at the same height, then we've met our goals, we've met our objectives. If those bars, as you see them, are at different heights, then we haven't met our objectives. So what can the Washington Group tools produce? They're, they're meant to collect internationally comparable data based on that ICF model that I spoke of earlier. And to fulfill the monitoring requirements established by the Convention, the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and the Sustainable Development Goals. What they can do is they can provide domain-specific distributions for each of those six activities, seeing, hearing, mobility, cognition, self-care, and communication. We can look at each one of those separately, and we can provide an overall disability identifier based on cutoffs when we do data analysis. And I'll explain a little bit of that later. This slide just shows you the uh, domain-specific information that we can get by asking these six questions. So we can learn about vision difficulties and people who have a lot of difficulty or worse, people who cannot see at all, or people who just have some difficulty or worse. And we can do that for all six of those. So we can get vision, hearing, mobility, cognition, self-care, and communication data independently using these questions. We can combine information also to look at, for example, sensory difficulties, combine seeing and hearing. That's specifically important to the deaf-blind community who want to know more about their particular population. The Washington Group questions fulfill two specific data needs. We can describe disability as a continuum of functioning based on those graded responses to questions in those functional domains. Remember that the responses are no difficulty, some difficulty, a lot of difficulty, and cannot do at all. And when we begin to look at those uh, response patterns over the six domains of functioning, we're, we're beginning to describe that continuum of functioning. 
And when we analyze the data, we can decide on a set of cutoffs, and I'll describe those to you, uh, that can be used to create disability identifiers. Those dichotomies that we didn't want when we started. We didn't want to ask that question, do you have a disability, yes or no? But at the end of the day, using these questions, we want to be able to define a population with disabilities. We need to do that for the CRPD and the SDGs, and we can do that. This slide shows you the different cutoffs that we've determined through data analysis using the Washington Group questions. If we include in our definition of people with disabilities, anybody who says they have even just some difficulty doing even just one of those six activities, then the prevalence of disability in the United States, and I'm going to say disability in air quotes because we're only talking about functional difficulty, but the prevalence would be almost 42 percent. At the other end of the scale, on the bottom line in this slide, if we only looked at people who said they could not do at all, they were unable to see or hear or walk or remember or communicate, the prevalence would be 2.2 percent. And again, this is beginning to fill out that continuum of functioning. What we, the Washington Group, decided for the purposes of reporting data internationally and disaggregating outcome indicators for the SDGs is that line in red where somebody is determined to have a disability if they say they have a lot of difficulty or cannot do at least one of those six domains of functioning. In the United States, that would put the disability prevalence rate at 9.5%. So what do we have here? We have multiple definitions of disability, and each one of them is a valid true definition, but only one of them is recommended for disaggregation and international reporting. You're free to use all of them or any one of them, but what becomes important is that you define how you determine disability in your reporting of your results. The SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are built, as I said, around the principle of leaving no one behind. We know that people with disabilities are the most disadvantaged and the most at risk for being left behind. Disaggregation of outcome indicators by disability status is necessary to ensure the equalization of opportunities and equitable development. Due to the lack of available and universally acceptable data collection tools, disability was not included in the previous decade, the Millennium Development Goals. But now we have the tools and we are advocating that they be used. Relevant indicators for reporting disability data for the Convention and the SDGs. Disability prevalence is an important outcome of data analysis. We want to be able to look at background demographic information, not only counting the people with disabilities, but looking at the distribution of people with disabilities by, for example, sex, or age, or ethnicity, or urbanicity. And then we want to be able to look at the outcome indicators for assessing the well-being of people with disabilities, for example, poverty outcomes employment outcomes, school attendance, health care utilization. Uh, all of that information will come from surveys that already exist. All we're proposing is that the Washington Group questions be inserted into these surveys so that data disaggregation, data collection, and data disaggregation happens on a routine basis. By standardizing disability data collection instruments, it will be possible to provide comparable data cross-nationally for populations living in a variety of cultures. As I said, they were tested and they have been used cross-nationally already by over 75 countries.
Data can be used to assess a country's compliance with development goals and UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and over time, improvements in meeting those goals. You need a baseline to begin with. So we propose using these questions on surveys to create that baseline. Then collecting data again in two years, or five years, or 10 years, depending on when data collections occur, you can look at outcomes again and see whether or not you've made the improvements that you've already earmarked with your policies and programs. What's important is to identify the data collection systems that are used for monitoring participation, those participation-based SDG indicators, and include one of the Washington Group tools on each of those systems that could be a household income and expenditure survey, or a healthcare survey, or a multiple indicator cluster survey, or a demographic and health survey. Any survey that you have that collects outcome information, like employment, education, healthcare utilization, make sure that there's one of the Washington Group tools embedded in that survey and you can do the disaggregation. Once the questions become integrated into core statistical systems, then disaggregating outcomes like education, employment, by disability status becomes routine and sustainable over time. But disaggregating outcome information by disability status will not tell us the entire story. It won't tell us what the barriers are that are preventing participation. We may know who isn't participating by disability status, but we won't know why. And this won't lead us to particular policy responses, which are ultimately important. But how can we get that information that's missing? There are multiple approaches. I'll give you two. One is that we include environmental modules into existing surveys. The ILO Washington Group Employment Disability Module for Labor Force Surveys talks about environmental barriers, why people are not working, what is keeping them out of the labor force. The inclusive education module that we're working with with UNICEF gives us information on why children are not going to school, or if they are going to school, what are the barriers they face in getting a good education. So that's one way to do it, to include those kinds of questions in broader surveys. The other option is to do a broad disability survey. These are more time consuming, and, but, but we'll give you more information. You can have modules on um, activity limitations, participation restrictions, and environmental barriers, as well as all of the background socio-demographic information that's important for identifying that population with disabilities, the barriers they face, and whether or not they have be able to overcome the barriers in, or, and participate on an equal basis with everyone else. So in conclusion, it's important to remember that data analysis on disability requires transforming that concept, the concept that describes a continuum of functioning into a dichotomy for prevalence, disaggregation, and data analysis. We want to be able to describe that full continuum of functioning, but for data analysis, we need to identify a population of people with disabilities. That's one thing. It's also important to remember that at the start of a data collection exercise, you need to develop an appropriate analysis plan. This will help you in determining what data need to be collected. Without the plan, you won't know what to collect. So it seems a little backwards, but make sure you have a good data analysis plan, and that'll help you in determining what data you need. Children with disabilities in schools around the world. UNICEF for every child. data.unicef.org/topic/child-disability